Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in JavaScript. And today we're going to be discussing cookies. Now, what now let's say that you want to make it so well in this example what we're going to be doing today is let's say you were to type your name into a text field and you were to say, uh click submit and you would want it so when the person visits your site for a second time it might give them a message like welcome back so and so. Uh well, basically, cookies, uh, what they're used for is to save information just like that. And so if you type something in, like maybe a password, if you go back to that website, uh, your password will still be there. And maybe your name might already be filled in or your email, just, just anything like that. Uh, and basically, there are two different types of cookies. There are session cookies, which are server-side cookies. Um, they're they're um, pieces, of, pieces of information that are stored on the server. So we're not going to be dealing with that because JavaScript is not a server-side language. So we'll be dealing with the other type of cookie, which are persistent cookies, which basically the information is stored on a file associated with your browser. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to be, I use Firefox. But anyways, let's uh, figure out how to create cookies. So for cookies, the format basically is, uh, for cookies, is you type in the name of the cookie that just the name for the cookie for reference so just basically the name and you set it equal to a value and the value will most likely be a variable so whatever you know if you're fetching information uh, and you set it equal to a variable you want the value to be the variable uh, followed by a semicolon and expires and basically the syntax for this is the day of the week yes it needs to be there followed by the actual day the month the month will always be the first three letters and whatever year so 2012 so 12 uh, followed by the time and GMT and that's pretty much it for that now there are actually others that we're not going to deal with like secure what this does is pretty much makes it secure um, other people won't be able to hack it or whatever uh, but the problem is is that we, we're not working with any secure channels like HTTPS we're not dealing with that, so we can't really do that. Um, path, um, basically, I guess it just specifies the path from where it starts. Uh, you do not need this. We're not going to be dealing with this. So it would be like your index or another common home home file. It's the name of the file on your website. The It's not what the users see. It's what you on your like FileZilla on your server, what you see. And then when it comes to actual domain or whatnot, uh, and then you just type in the domain name but again we're not going to be dealing with that we're just going to do these two it's simple and everything still works so let's actually create a cookie so we're going to want to make it so when someone types in a button uh, that the cookie will be created and can be well used for later so within our body tags so notice my script tags because we're going to be making a function so our script tags will be up here in within our header tags so in our body let's create a simple text input field um, let's I don't know let's give it an ID of since it's the since it's fetching the name let's just type in name and let's create a button let's pretend that it's a submit button but it's not going to really be a submit button because we're not going to actually be submitting it anywhere so let's just use the regular button for this example we'll want it to, I don't know, say enter and then for on click some sort of function so let's see how it looks so far yeah, let me get rid of that that's from, some, that's from something else I was doing uh, so enter, okay so it's all there so let's actually create a function and then inside that function we'll create the cookie so let's call it, I don't know, check. Now let's actually create the cookie. So we're going to need some pieces of information. We're going to need uh, the value of whatever you as the user types in. And we're also going to need to catch the date. So outside of the function, so this will be created as soon as the page loads. Let's create a variable called username. And we're not, we won't want to mess with it yet. Then we'd have to access the date object. So let's go expires and set that equal to new 
new date. So we want to do that outside. Okay. So inside our function, we're going to want to type in username equals, and then you want to type in document dot get element by ID, and then the ID we're going to want to be fetching is the name for our name. So we're typing name, and we're going to want the value that whatever you typed in. So we type in dot value the property. Then next, the next thing you type in, uh, let's go expires, and actually let me do something really quickly. Yeah, expires. Now we're going to want to, we don't, normally cookies will be destroyed as soon as you close your browser, and this is why we're setting a date, so they won't be destroyed indefinitely. So, in order to access the date, we're going to want to set full year, and this will make, this will make sense as soon as I finish this. So I'll type in expires. So within this, we'll type in expires dot get full year plus one. Now what's happening here is we're accessing the year, the current year of whenever the user accessed your website, loaded it in their browser, and the set full year is going to change that year by adding one to it. This is what's happening. So this is 2012, so it's going to add one 2013. So that's what that is doing. Um, the next actually comes, uh, I believe, the actual creation of our cookie. So we're going to want to type in, for our cookie, we'll type in document dot cookie. And this is going to be a little weird because we're going to be using quotes when we don't ever usually use quotes. Uh, but we're not going to be using quotes yet. Now, I'm going to have to explain something. When, when we're dealing with uh, cookies, you, you're going to have to make sure... There's going to be character spaces and whatnot. So, um, cookies, they can't read spaces. They can't read certain characters like colons or semicolons. So, it won't work. It'll crash if you type in something like for your name on the website with a space, like maybe between your first and last name. So, what you want to do is use um, what is called the escape. And what that'll do is ensure to replace spaces with other characters like I believe percent 20 percent 20 is it takes the place of any white spaces like actual spaces but anyways this will be the name of our cookie you don't really need the escape here but as you can see there's nothing empty and it's not going to change but it's just for you know uh, safety precautions then an equal sign plus then another escape and then username since you have to have that there in case someone types in both names and I'll show you in a, in a later why that is so important but then after this uh, what you want to type in is plus I know this is just so much semicolon and then expires and then we're going to want to type in expires dot because this is the name of our variable then what we're going to want to do is use 2GMT string. And what that does is this, well first of all let me explain all of this. So first we typed in the name of the cookie. We wanted to give, I'm just going to call it name, why not? This can be anything, but let's just call the name name since that's what we're referring to, someone's name. And it's going to be equal to whatever you typed in for the value. So then we have our semicolon expires equals and then this 2GMT string will convert the current date from which they open the browser adding a year to it so it will expire one year after and it will automatically print it like this as such and then you can type in alert you know what let me show that to you so I'll type in document dot write first I'll show that to you and actually I want this to be outside the function because I don't want to create the cookie, cookie, cookie yet so up here, uh, document dot write, and then expires dot two GMT string, and I believe I should have it written out correctly. There it is. Um, so you have your date right there, and hmm. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, you see how it says 2012. Well, that's because um, you, it's not until the function is activated that it's going to add one year. So it's not going to say 2013 until you hit the button. 
but it did fetch the date as you see it's the day all of this perfectly as you uh with the gmt following just just perfectly so that's that's how that works so let me get rid of this now and then let's type in alert and document dot cookie so click save I'll refresh the page and let's just type in Adam and I click enter whoops Ooh, function check where's the button I that's why I don't think I did there you go for the on click event handler you want it to go into check that's the name of the function so that's why it didn't work sorry about that so Adam and there it goes. It says name equals Adam. The date does not appear there. Uh, so don't worry about that. If the date does not appear, it's not supposed to. And yeah, there you go. We just created a cookie. So what if you want to make it so when you come back to the website, certain text pops up like, welcome back, so-and-so. Uh, so what you can do for that is, this would be a little bit complicated, but outside your function, we're going to have to create an if statement. Uh, I'm writing it exactly as I know it's going to be written. So we're going to have if, so within our first set of quotes, uh, I know this is, this is uh, quite a bit of stuff, but basically it's, oh, you know what, I'm kind of confusing myself. So what we're going to want to do is, well, first of all, find out if the cookie even exists. So we're going to type in document.cookie, and then equals, then if there's nothing in there, well, if there's already nothing in there, then it's going to come out true. We don't want that. So we're going to want to make sure uh, equals false. So what this does is it checks if there's nothing in there, and then it will only pass if it's false, meaning there is something in there. So, I know, it's a lot of stuff. So then after that, we can type in document.write, and then inside this, ah, uh, jeez, there's so much stuff. Um, document dot cookie and let's add some tags the, I put these uh, quotes out there for tags so I'll throw in I don't know h2 and center so it'll center and an exclamation point because I know what it's gonna say cancel the center and cancel the h2 and I want it to say welcome back space and then there's the exclamation point but um, if you use this, it's going to say name equals and then your name. You don't want that, right? You just want the user's name. So what we're going to have to do is create two more variables. So we're going to have to type in, uh, so we can actually create the variables here because we don't have to worry about them being recreated because we're not, this is not in the function. So they can only be created once. So the first thing we want to do is create a length. And basically, you just type in document.cookie dot length minus one and this will make sense in just a moment then the next thing you want to do is create var and let's call it I, I don't uh what, what have I not used for name uh, I'll just put down message since that since that's what it is basically and what that will be is document dot cookie dot substring whoops and basically we're going to just come back with a substring so we need two values so notice how it starts off with name equals so this is index 0 1 2 3 4 so the fifth one is where we want to start because we don't want all that all those others to come out then for the second number we want to return the length now the reason why I have put minus 1 there is because we don't want you know everything to just we don't want the entire uh this this always goes one index higher since it starts with index zero then whatever the last index is is technically one number less than the length of the cookie so if you put in let's say length uh, and click save then if you refresh the page now it says whoops uh, oh whoops I'm sorry about that uh, if right here we're gonna want it to say message so I click save and then I'll refresh the page now it says welcome back Adam. Now I'm actually uh, going to make a part two to this, uh, so I'll uh, be right back because there's a little bit more I want to explain.